Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. What what other weird things were going? I, I just is kind of throwing weird political stuff that had been going on the last few weeks because it's been a while since we've done this. Um, which of these uh, floats your boat more? <laughs> Uh, the ones left. Um, I don't know what this means, so let's talk about that. Which one? The this the one I highlighted. I'm not seeing highlight. Above or below your cursor? Below. Below? Oh, the condoms for Catholics? Is that the one you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the, the one above it. Oh, okay. So you said below. <laughs> Okay, there it goes. Then. Oh, so this this is this is ironically worded. Yeah, uh, this one, uh, the one you're talking about. Okay. Uh, I mean, the main issues uh, for this political season, aside from the economy, are the rich suck, corporations are evil, homosexuals. For some reason, condoms for Catholics, and then you have stuff of that just kind of forks off of all this stuff. Basically, everybody is picking apart every single company, and they're basically finding every single job that, in their opinion, should be being done by an American versus being outsourced somewhere else. It's not a cut and dry issue. That's why I think it's going to be argued a lot this election. One of the recent ones that came up this week actually, and this is tech related, but it's it's very much a political issue. And that is Google and Facebook are outsourcing a lot of the aspects of moderation and curation out of the country for a dollar an hour. And I can't decide if that's a bad thing or a good thing. Because the reality is, I don't see anybody in the United States of America agreeing to pay for the stuff Google gives you for free, or pay for Facebook, or so on and so forth. And I'm I'm not sure very many people would be willing to pay more money if they charged their advertisers seven, eight times as much as they charge them, because that's what they'd have to do. I mean, to, to cover the 750 an hour that you'd do in the U.S. versus the dollar an hour you'll do outside the United States, it's, you know, putting it in perspective, you do have to charge that much more. And I'm like, I don't know enough of the particulars. In in principle, like where do you stand on outsourcing jobs? <laughs> Hello. Did you not hear a damn word I just oh said? Uh, I think you're asking where do I stand on outsourcing? Yeah, you're gonna have right. to forgive us this show. We're having Skype difficulties. <laughs> so. Here's my question, uh, exactly. Um, in what process, I'm not necessarily doubting it, but more of just a question for me. In what process does the money uh, leave the U.S. economy exactly? Because, you know, as, as I understand, you make something cheaper overseas and it becomes cheaper here. Um, so where where is the money leaving the U.S. economy? Uh, well, the argument set forth, and it's a valid argument, is the United States has millions of people out of work, which is true. We have millions of people out of work. And they're like, why aren't these jobs being done in the United States of America? We clearly have the workforce for them. Okay. Uh, at, at least that's the argument for it's like, you know, let's put Americans back to work. Stop putting those overseas people to work. Okay. <laughs> well, so... You know, in theory, if we didn't make everything here and everything was more expensive, would that be uh, proportional to the amount that it was before? Meaning that people still wouldn't be able to pay for anything, or would it not be proportional and it would actually be good for the economy? People could buy stuff now. Well, and and that that that's the debate on this. You know, would the consumer? 
pay the extra price in goods for the additional labor costs, whatever the goods are. You know, in the case of Google and Facebook, which is who the latest one's going up, they don't charge for their goods and services. They pay for everything by footing the bill to advertisers, which get a return on their advertising investment. As the price of advertising goes up, the number of people who buy advertising goes down because there's less return on the investment in the advertising. Right. You know, the most expensive ad words and stuff don't get bought. People buy the cheapy 20 cents ones. They don't buy the $10, $50 half words. <laughs> That's like there's... Um, so, yeah, it... it I, I, my personal opinion has always been that the reason stuff goes overseas is because the consumer wants it to. But that sounds callous and cruel and uh, and a lot of other things. But in my own business, there have been where there have been things where the max price the c clients will pay is X. When I take all the minimal costs out, there's like X dollars left per, to pay per hour of someone actually doing the work, and the X dollars is less than minimum wage for skilled labor. My two options are automate that and create no jobs or send it overseas. You know, that, that's really the only two ways I can fill the bill at the price the customer wants to pay. Um, it, it, a lot of people get mad at me for that. They're like, oh, you're one of those demon people who's sending jobs overseas. Yeah. I'm like, that's not a U.S. job anyways. I can't do that. It, it, there isn't seven fifty an hour. And really, minimum for the skilled labor position in the U.S. is 15 So, it, you, how do you pay $15 an hour on $3 of revenue? You know, it's, it doesn't work. How much of what I'm saying are you hearing? Because I keep seeing a little Skype thing pop up. <laughs> and you're going, uh-huh, a lot. Well... I think that when you come back, I can hear the rest, but I kind of get blanked out for a second. I mean, I understand what you're talking about. You're talking about if I'm making so much and my net profit is, what, $3, I can't legally hire someone in the U.S., so my only option is to automate it or to hire overseas, correct? Yeah. So, you know, I understand what you're saying. I'm getting just enough to do that. It's not too bad. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And that because we have a minimum wage, a lot of these things we can't really hire, uh, you know. There are ways to get around minimum wage using 1099 and the independent contractor things. But yeah, but I, I, but, I but, but then market value before. gets in the way. Like kids like you... Like Kids like you, or something. Yeah, yeah, kids like you who are living at home who are just looking for experience, you'll take those jobs, but a seasoned person won't, because they're like, no, I can earn fifteen an hour. I'm not going to take three. <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, the, the evidence that I've heard for that is that, oh, well, if you would make it in America, then you're only going to charge a little bit more and that people will be fine for that, you know, and then it'll be, everything will be good. Uh, you know, like, oh, well, you know, if you're only making $3 profit, why not just charge, you know, $12 more than you could hire, you know, the American? Um, and so that only really works if you don't have competition who is... Which we do. I'm, we have global competition at this point. And so that's the problem with a lot of people saying that, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I've heard that a lot of this stuff, if, like, so Apple, you know, hires the people from, I'm not sure what it's called, but big Chinese factory, God, I gotta know the name. Well, there, there's a couple of them, you're probably thinking of Foxconn, because that's the one that's yeah. in the media all the time. Right, at the one in the media. And so, what, from what I heard, it only will cost about... It only would cost about 17% more if they hired them in America. Um, so, you know, that 17% that or maybe a little bit more 
I'm sure he had a point. Damn, Skype! Alright. How much did you hear? I, 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 we were on the, you were talking about the 17% more. <laughs> right. Okay, so as I understand, the, the iPad in America would only cost like about 17% more. At least that's what I saw in the Daily Show. Uh, but, you know, generally... You know, Your audio just got really low. Barely. Uh, I don't even know. How about now? Uh, okay, you, you suddenly got really loud. <laughs> Alright, how about now? Now you're too low. In between those two. <laughs> how about now? That's about right. Alright, perfect. Now, um, so, as I understand, again, so it's about 75% or 17% more, it would cost 17% more if it was made in America rather than in China and Foxconn. So this is, I think, what's 17 or just what's 20% of, uh, how much is an iPad, like four ninety nine? Well, uh, uh, okay, hold you, 17% more, so... So basically, that's seventeen dollars for every hundred dollars. So, like a thousand dollar product. Well, it's not a thousand dollars. Well, actually, it was it on wholesale costs or on the retail price? Which yeah, number were I they basing yeah, it on? Yeah, I can't necessarily do it on retail since things like the iPhone are subsidized based on contracts. Right. Uh, so for the iPhone, I think the iPhone costs like eight hundred dollars to make. No. Uh, how well, much? The, the, the latest guesstimations on the iPhone is that it costs between 190 and 230 to make. So they're either breaking right. even at the 200 mark or losing just a tiny bit of money. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, so let's take, for example, uh, the iPhone. Let's assume it takes 230. So... What's that? So 17 plus 17, that's... Okay, that's, uh... 30. Times 1.17, it'd be 270 a phone. 26910, yeah. but 270, yeah. 270 a phone. Right. So it'd be 270, instead of losing 30 bucks, they'd lose 70 bucks. They'd have to subsidize 70 bucks to keep the same 199 price. I swear we have got to use something other than Skype. This is getting ridiculous. It keeps cutting bit off, it keeps cutting James off. It's I know I've got plenty of bandwidth right now. I just did a test. I've got 1.8 upload and over 6 down. I know I don't have a bandwidth problem. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my problem. <laughs> or it's Skype. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. It's about, it's about 270, a little bit less. It's like 269. 269.10 if we use those numbers, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, the difference uh, from all of that into 230 is, you know, about 40. And so comparing that to uh, some, some comparable product, and that's important, who's still making it uh, at a factory where they can get that 17% less, the fact that they're going to have 
a 40% more profit. That's a huge deal. I mean, consider the profit difference, not just the amount of price they're paying more. You know, if they're selling this for one ninety nine. Well, it's not just that, but you need to keep in mind, I mean, just like using your iPhone example, who is the iPhone's primary competition? Well, right. in today's economy, that's Samsung. Love or hate Samsung, it is Samsung. Is Samsung a U.S. company? No. <laughs> no. no we got to be talking right now. <laughs> uh, say what? Unbelievable. Okay, hang up and call back because it's like trying to reconnect over here. Did you hang up or something or? Unbelievable. Hold on while we try and get the call back. It's very poor, Skype. <laughs> And now you don't even show his online. <sighs> I love Skype. I love internet. <laughs> It knows we're talking bad about it. It knows we're using it for a non a non favoritist agenda. <laughs> There he goes. It's like somebody resetting your router or something. It's like no. I, I promise last try on wireless and then I'll just get on the internet. Uh, it, it's just, it has to do with my router. It's really bad. We used to have a good router and then my dad bought a new one and now it just... All, all of a sudden, randomly, it'll stop working. <laughs> and you just have to... Nice. And it's really annoying. You, you, you have to go reset the giant Linksys. The giant Linksys is not blinking properly. <laughs> anyway, so, um, here's an interesting thing. So, um, if we're selling the iPhone at 199 and it costs 230 to make, that means that eventually thirty-one dollars has to be made made up, right? Uh, supposedly, the cell phone carriers are footing the bill for that. Well, right, right. That's what it means. That means that eventually, through the carriers, they have to get the thirty-one dollars. That's fine, you know. Uh, but you know, considering the only seventeen percent more to seventy, that means that they have to make up seventy-one dollars. So even though it only costs 17% more to make, as far as the amount of money it costs to make up the loss is over twice as much. Well, and people are already bitching about the cell phone companies raising the um, breach of contract penalties. So consider, you know, for them to make the same amount of money, they would have to make twice as much profit off the contracts. So that's a really big deal. So yeah. basically they'll lower everybody's data cap to one gigabyte? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this, it really, the, the amount of money a little bit costs more, it makes a difference in some cases, and the 70% can be small, but it's not really as small as you think. 
Now, and now, now to up. play devil's advocate for the other side, even though I diametrically disagree with it, though, the, the thing, everybody will argue, well, we'll just have a tariff on that, and all goods that come into the U.S. will artificially make them the same price. And that, like, that does stop the whole competition, but that does kind of make everything more expensive. Yeah, I'm going to say the consumer's still having to pay more for everything. Yeah. <laughs> It, you know, it, it, it fixes the competition yeah, thing, but it drives the price of everything up. Okay, say what you said again, because I was talking over you. As long as everyone loses, it's fair. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. Everybody loses. We, we, all, all of us get poorer. All, all of us are spending more money than we have to, just so we can prop up the fact that, I'm sorry, we don't make a competitive bid in the global market for a lot of things. It, it will surprise the hell out of people, but there's some stuff the U.S. actually does best. And some of these are manufacturing jobs. You know, there isn't anybody on the planet that can compete with us. But there's a lot of things in which our bid is a joke compared to what other markets can make. Um, and I, I mean, personally, my solution to that is how about the U.S. makes a favorable bid again? You know, it's, if we, we figure out a way to make a competitive bid, I, there's got to be a way to do that, you know, rather than demanding jobs just be American to be American. Uh, I'm, I don't know how you would do that, though, in the U.S. I mean, this is politically unpopular, but step one in that would be abolish minimum wage. A job's worth what a job's worth. Some jobs would be worth more, some jobs would be worth less. Um, the, uh, the, uh, abolishing minimum wage is a two-edged sword. Ultimately, in my opinion, I don't know what school of economics you subscribe to, and there is a debate on this. In my opinion, ultimately, minimum wage serves to make everything cost more. Now, if we suddenly abolished minimum wage in the United States, and all of a sudden you could pay somebody who was making seven fifty an hour, three eighty an hour, because that's what they're optimally worth. Their rent's not going to magically go down. Their electricity. It would take months for the market and the costs of living to adjust to the fact that millions of people have less money uh, and there would be significant hardship during that period of adjustment for the people who suddenly found themselves worth half as much uh, but I don't know how you can create that adjustment without getting rid of the artificial prop up and, 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 and that sounds callous and that's sound and, and honestly that goes back to that's where we should be, you know, spending, uh, well, even if, well, the, it, that, that would actually, even though welfare could take care of that, welfare would then be another way of artificially propping up the price of everything. It's like, yeah. it, 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 Do you, so do you think that we should also lose the regulation on hours? Uh, well, okay, here's the thing. I agree with some of the regulations on hours. Others, I don't. I agree if you're working more than 40 hours a week, you should get additional compensation. What that additional compensation is should be between you and your employer. But I think it should be mandatory that it is an additional form of compensation. Because the reality is if you're working more than 40 hours a week, you are, I mean, the the way we have it broke up is basically you're spending a third of your life sleeping, a third of your life working, and a third of your life living uh, is, is the way we guesstimated it. And if you're sacrificing some of your third for living, for working, that's different than your necessity third for living, and you should be compensated additionally. However, if you're getting paid a higher compensation than most people are getting anyways, I, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, I know some union jobs where because of the way the union contracts worded, overtime is not time and a half, it's 3.8 times time normal pay because there's 
there's the extra pay for going over the union block hours, and then there's time and a half on the time and a half's time and a half, and it's just, it's, it winds up being this ridiculous inflation in pay for going those extra hours over because the federal kicks in with the union kick in with this, it just ah, it gets out of hand very quickly. Uh, and I agree in the in the mandatory breaks, you know, the 15 minute breaks, the the lunch, the so on and so forth. If you've worked X hours, so on and so forth, this, especially the ones for drivers, uh, yeah. f uh, for truckers and drivers. You know, if they've driven X hours in a in a Y hour period, they're not allowed to do anything before it's on. And if they're on contract or salary, that that counts as time because it's just the way the schedule worked out. And, and I agree with that. You know, they they don't have any control over that, and you shouldn't be driving a, a rig asleep. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, what about you? It, I mean, do you, I don't. Do you think minimum wage is artificially propping up stuff? Do you th agree? Well, on all like, that? obviously it is. I mean, there's no question that it is. But just should I get rid of it? Volume. Your volume went way low. Sorry. Hello? There we go. Anyway, obviously minimum wage is propping up stuff. I don't think anyone can argue that it isn't. That's what, you know, minimum wage does. Uh, that's, you know, how it but should we get rid of it? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I really kind of subscribe to two kind of views. And one is very free market. Uh, with regulation, and we talked about this last time, one is very free market with regulation on things that affect the human race, like, you know, uh, maybe if we're about to die of global warming, we need some regulations on the output of that, and we need some programs to actually fight that, but as far as things that have to do with more humanity issues and not the human race, uh, which is, which is a minimum Thing. I don't really believe in that much regulation. Uh, so, I don't know about there being no minimum wage. You know, it, 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 it's, I feel like, you know, a person who's ignorant could get exploited, but I suppose that could happen already if they're ignorant or not. Well, and, and, and honestly, minimum wage... Uh, winds up being an exploitation anyways because most people don't realize how much minimum in, in the last few years minimum wage increased significantly and most people didn't realize that so there were people who were making you know just above minimum wage they were making like double triple minimum wage but because minimum wage rose so much they they, they were doing skilled work for like just above minimum wage and they were unaware <laughs> until and, and th th that's the real way in which minimum wage hurts it, 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 it like your job you're, you're saying that when minimum wage was five something you're making 850 okay you're doing great they raise minimum wage to seven something your 850 doesn't go up yeah. So now you just got knocked down to all but minimum wage because minimum wage got rose. And now you're at the poverty level. Like, wait a minute, I, I, what happened? I got poor. <laughs> and so uh, I, I feel like uh, as long as we, we do need to uh, have legal enforcement. Uh, do you have autocorrect on on Skype's audio? Yeah, it's like low. Yeah, it just like keeps lowering you way down. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to make it stay there forever. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, so can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> so as lo as long as we do have, um, oh my gosh, as long as we do have legal enforcement to stop monopolies and trusts and stuff like that, because if everyone in your entire city is charging a super low price, then there's nothing really you could do about it. I mean, you could move the city, but that's that's a problem if all the companies were to get together and say, hey, we can make everyone get paid three cents. So that's one of the things that needs to be stopped. And by not having monopolies, you stop that because then you have competition. So anyway, that stopping monopolies is 
just as much part of a free market as not controlling wages. And so I think that if we can do those, then I would believe in the free market. Uh, and very strongly the free market with only regulations where it actually affects our survival. You there? I, I'm here. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm trying to let you talk so Skype doesn't like lower you or up for you or something. <laughs> <Get your, laughs> yes, we're trying to have a discussion if Skype will let us. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I've seen this. Like, areas where the whole area gets depressed and just salaries wind up being 60% what they are in the rest of the state. Uh, within two years, rents go down. Home prices go down. Everything. It's like the reality is people don't have the money to afford those nice bubble prices. It's like they're... They're they're now at the minimums, and they say uh, you can't charge eight hundred dollars if people can only afford five hundred dollars in rent. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, but like I said, that's not an overnight process. You know, particularly if the landlords mortgage themselves to the hill, <laughs> uh, depending on eight hundred dollar rent. <laughs> Sometimes right. they have to go through foreclosure before somebody can come in and buy it at what it's currently worth. Uh, I subscribe to that, and I do believe, yeah, there should be no minimum wage if we can control monopolies. I do. I agree with you. Uh, and I also am quite intrigued, uh, which would be nice if the guy was here, I'm quite intrigued with the zeitgeist philosophy. Uh, so I'm kind of on both high ends of the spectrum in what I'm interested by practically. I'm more interested by the free market, but more in a kind of perfect world kind of way, I'm very intrigued by something like Zeitgeist being tested. Anyway. It would be interesting to see what you could do there. Technically, you wouldn't even need money in a Zeitgeist society. Right. And so that, it's a lot different from communism. Uh, you know, it's, it's not it's not exactly the same. You know, I've said before, and I, I like to make this argument when I'm talking about Zeitgeist, that the only way that everyone could lead, that could live happily and not really have to work and just have a good quality of living is if we had a bunch of slaves that could work for us for free. And well, you know, uh, 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 okay. The, the, well, let me let me let me finish my point. And so, you know, we could we could do this either by having literal slaves or in the Zeitgeist Society that is fulfilled by robots. Right, and technology so, takes the place of serfdom. So technology, and so that's, that's my point. And so technology is the slaves that could work for free. Uh, just like in Rome, they had a bunch of slaves that allowed them to have a high quality of living for all that cheap. But this time, we're not doing it without violating some human rights. Because now we have robots that can do this stuff. They can do all this labor uh, for absolutely free and a lot better than any human could anyway. Especially things like farming and stuff like that. I think that that should all be done with vertical farms. How, how, how much do you want to bet if we ever try that experiment as a society, all the same people who are complaining about jobs overseas are going to be complaining about jobs for humans, not for robots? <laughs> Could you, can't you just well, see uh, it? You are, you are already complaining about that. Yeah, uh, it's uh, true. It's as we automate factories and stuff, they're like, oh, that's my job, not the machines. <laughs> But that's, that's the idea behind that, guys, that, you know, I, I, and I kind of believe that, you know, if the only way that things could work like that is if we did use robots for all that thing. And I am kind of mad, even in a free market, because in a free market society, we should still be using robots for most of this stuff. It just, it makes sense, you know, it would be, it, things would get cheaper. And if some things would get, you know, really ridiculously cheap, well, that just makes sense if it suddenly made was really cheap to make some uh, just make some food and you had this and people started selling it for really cheap and other companies got mad and went out of business because they weren't using these robots well that's also the free market just as much as uh, you just to hit it would be just as good for the free market as it would be good for the zeitgeist because yeah no people wouldn't have jobs farming 
but now food would be almost nothing. So there's there's good stuff about it, and I'm kind of mad. Uh, 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 well, and the. Uh, is, I, I, I wish he was here because I don't really fully understand the zeitgeistness but I mean to play devil's advocate from the thing we're talking about with like the employment thing one of the real reasons people get so mad about this is they're like well I live here in the US and that's my job so now I have no job and I need food too I need, you know, I need to be working. Where's my work? You know, that's, uh, and, you know, short of an education retrain, I, 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 I say that all the time over here. I say education retrain, but not every human being can do every single job. Uh, there are, I mean, there are people who are born to do job X. That, that, that sounds bad that, that sounds like I'm talking about some kind of class or caste system or something like no but it's like it's like no this is just this is what they like to do it's what they're good at it's what they want to do and we make that obsolete you know we make it that's not necessary anymore we, we've done it better and more efficient than you ever could and like but that's what I do. That's me. That's what I like to do. I like doing that. I like being inefficient at that. That's well, you know, we, we it, it, you know, <laughs> I've said before that when computers were invented and they really started getting popular, a lot of people lost their job, uh, and people are still losing their job because of computers. But we, I mean, we couldn't have, as a society, just stopped just said, oh, you know, people lose their job when we use these, we better not use them. No, we, overall, the human race has benefited, I would say, from using computers. In fact, no, it, it has benefited. Uh, and I think the same thing would happen with these automated systems, because things would get cheaper, you know. Yes, some people would lose their job, they would have to find different jobs. You know, if you could do agriculture, maybe you can't do a super high-tech job. Maybe you can't fix cars, but there might be something that you could do, and the idea with Zeitgeist is that you wouldn't necessarily have to uh, if you weren't able to. And also, in, in Zeitgeist, education is is free, uh, so that's that's something for there. You know, everyone does. It, it, get yeah, it's a utopian model. It, it, it's in, in 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 theory. I don't know about in practice. It's, um, I don't agree with everything about it, but I, I've watched all the movies for it, and I've read, I've read a little bit of it, so I know a little bit, and I like all the people who I've, who I've watched it with and I've talked about with, they're, they're intrigued by the idea, and people tend to be intrigued by utopian societies, and it's not bad, you know, maybe there's some things that we could learn from it, maybe it's something that's worth trying, but anyway. Once upon a time, a free market capitalistic society was a utopian society. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. In theory, it's perfect. It's always self-correcting. Yeah. In practice, when it self-corrects, people have hardship. Right. <laughs> and that's true, you know, and that's part of the system, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> It's hard, but at least the hardship won't tend to last forever. Uh, versus some other systems where, you know, if you go on by a Keynesian model where you're buying off debt, if that thing crashes, that won't come back until you go to a free market. So, anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, so, as far as practically, like I said, I do believe for free market, and I do believe even if people will lose their jobs, we should be doing we should be doing literally everything, every single thing we can, automated by robots. If we do that, none of these jobs that people are like we're going to bring manufacturing back to the United States, that's that's not going to result in one job. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Uh, but 
Because the whole mentality behind that argument is we're going to create yobs. There's going to be yobs out there. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. Maybe in the future things will be so cheap to produce that society won't, that, you know, society won't really have a need that the government could provide welfare for a bit of food and stuff like that. It's just because... But, uh, okay, it, but uh, how, how does it... The government's primary revenue base is us. Right. So if we're not working, where's the government getting its money other than printing it? We're never going to reach 0% of employment. We've never gone below, you know, what, like, we've never gone below 70. Below 70? As in below 70% Have we ever gone above 30%? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Uh, like, I'm hesitant to make a statement on that because the reality is we we really only started heavily tracking this stuff in the 50s. And so I have no data for about 100 plus years of the United States of America. And there were some periods in the 1800s and the early 1900s and so on where we probably could have had 60% unemployment, but we just had a different society at the time where we didn't, it, that, it, that sounds horrible. In, in, in an urbanized society like we have now, you can't function with 60% unemployment. In a rural society, like a large chunk of the territories and to be states in the U.S. were in that time, you no, know, it, it just that uh, you can survive like that for a while. It's just uh, so. I, I would, I officially, would, I no. Un unofficially, I have no clue. There's no data to make the statement okay. on. <laughs> I would ask the question if a free market society, because as I understand, a free market society does largely uh, revolve around the fact that money continues to circulate. You know, whatever price it is, if it doesn't circulate, the market can't really adjust. And so, what happens if uh, just we don't have enough jobs for all the people? Uh, would a free market be best? I mean, you know, things could be dirt cheap in that, uh, you know, it's almost like. You know, it would be a penny for all the, you know, food. You know, just just because it's just. You could have your month's food for a penny, but you earn right. zero. <laughs> how, how would a how would a free market economy adjust to that? And the fact is, if there's not enough jobs for all the people, the only way it would adjust is having less people. Uh, 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 honestly, I. Do you want to hear my answer to how I think our society would adjust to that? Sure. Given our society, once something becomes cheap, it has no value. Uh, I mean, and this is evident by the people who, you know, they go to Walmart, they buy the cheap $5 mixer. It lasts six weeks till they break it. Oh, well, it's just $5. I'll throw this one away and go buy another $5 mixer. <laughs> and so, so the way we would adjust to that is uh, a lot of things that aren't disposable and wasteable now would become disposable and wasteable, and the new booming industry would be waste management. <laughs> Unless, of course, a robot was doing that too. <laughs> yeah, uh... You just got really low in volume. Okay. How am I? You're better now. Alright. So, that's actually one of the things that the Zeitgeist Movement strongly says is, is, is bad about a free market economy and that it, encur it encourages planned obsolescence. I will tend to agree with that, unfortunately. And, you know, one of the things they say is that Part of their ideas for economies that things need to be made to be replaceable. You know, things can't be made just in one piece. They should be made so that they can have different parts put in, stuff like that. Uh, you know, a lot of times a computer is fine. You just need some more memory or a better this. So, uh, but they're not necessarily made to be so easily replaceable. They're 
not. Yeah, we don't. We haven't used sister boards forever. There's a reason for that. They're actually more efficient without sister boards. But yeah. And so um, that that's the idea with this. And a free market economy doesn't work that much without it. So you know, these are all valid problems with a free market. Technically, how do we stop going to such efficiency where things are almost free? You know, well, it's because no one could buy them. Uh, well, the, 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 the reverse on that, and damn it, I wish he was here because he we're, we're 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 putting words in his mouth. <laughs> it's like, uh, but um, it, it's okay if you marginalize something enough, where you have abundance. Right. You know, it's like you go to the gas station. Oh no, just take the penny. You know, it's like you, you, you're, you're five cents short. You know, the guy's like, I'll just take five pennies. You know, it's like, it's like it's, it's, there's abundance. It's, they're, they're not really worth anything. I'll just make it work. Uh, if you marginalize things to that degree, where there truly was enough food being produced for every single human being on a planet to eat 10 square meals a day, you know, more than they can possibly eat, the reality is, at that point, food is not worth a penny. It's worth nothing because there's more than anybody could ever possibly need. Want some food? Go take it. You know, it, it's. Um, I'm starting to sound like Marcel here now because it's like. I mean, the reality is, but if if there is more than enough, if you have, if if the supply truly exceeds any possible demand. It has no value at all. Okay. It, 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 it only has value when it's scarce, when there's not enough to go around. And from my taking the beginner level economics class, that says that supply would go down to meet demand. Yeah. Basically, yeah. If, if you can make supply fully exceed demand, you basically well, marginalize it to the point of... Until people would just stop producing as much, enough food until people had to pay at least a little bit for food and then not not necessarily i, I mean if 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 the machines operating at it, say, say you're going the zeitgeist route and you have machines operating okay. if, if them operating at 40% of their capacity is producing 180% of the food needs of the planet you're going to be you're going to be storehousing stuff for the winners and, and so yeah. on and so forth. You know, I mean, basically, no matter how much you scale that system back, food doesn't cost anything now. Food's free because... You no, know, in a Zygon society, that would be great. That's very much planned, that things would become so efficient that for most things there would be abundance, um, especially food. And But I'm saying for a free market economy... I mean, if a company is only these things and producing these food, and even if they can do it for incredibly cheap, they're still always going to have to sell it for something, unless the government's paying, which is not free market. No, the government's not free market, but, um, okay, and, and, and the standard... Uh, society, uh, society that, that's, that's the plan. That works great. When you have that abundance, it's great. You know, everyone can get fed. Well, what, what 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 you would do is you would basically produce a you would you would not overproduce. In fact, uh, there's there's plenty of companies that have made that mistake. They've produced they've flooded the market with their goods. Media's done this. Advertising's done this. And the more they flood the market with their goods and service, the less they're worth. You know it. it Uh, okay, you have autocorrect turned on on Skype. It's not quite on Skype. It's something that a Bluetooth would make the call. Did it go up? Yeah, open your mixer and, like, leave it on. <laughs> All right, let me, let me... All right. There you go.
tell that the mixer is reporting these weirdly. Okay. Uh, let's just continue. So, what I'm saying is that supply would go down, as in these companies, because they're not making anything, would stop producing so much until they make a little bit. So, the amount of food they produce has to go down until people are willing to pay at least a penny for it. Until they make a little bit of money. Even if it's incredibly cheap, people have to be willing to pay something for it to work in a free market. Right? Um, not always. Well, how? How else? They're not making any money. The government's not paying them. They're just... Not well, think office. of the Google business model. So uh, what food has advertisements on them? This peach brought to you by... Oh, what the hell was the thing from Idiocracy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it sounds crazy, but, you know, it, it's... <laughs> There are plenty of business models in a capitalistic society for giving your product away and making a shitload off of giving it away for nothing. So I can see two business models that work for that. Um, one is the advertising. And either you use food as an incentive to come and be berated by advertising, or you put the advertising on the food. And I'm sure we can do this in a safe way. You know, we can just, like, just like we can make those little rice little candies that have the yeah. actual wrapper made of rice. Yeah, I know I, I can so see this. We're gonna like start printing on peaches and oranges and bananas and <laughs> like you you you'll 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 grill up a steak and the dyes will come out and it'll have an ad in it and that's how you know it's done. The ad showed up <laughs> thinking in terms of money is going back to barter. That food is the money. Well, uh, uh, this is not a capitalistic society. This is a socialistic society. <laughs> uh, so take this with a grain of salt. But basically, you're a central authority dictating what is somebody's share of contribution. And you're saying, well, this doesn't cost anything, but we're only going to give it to you if you do this. In other words, if you didn't work your 9 to 5 40 hours this week, and whatever we think you need to, then you obviously don't need your share of food because you didn't do your share. Yes. <laughs> you know that, well, that's socialistic, communistic, but it, that that is another economic model. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. For different government models, having super cheap food works, and it's incredibly good. The free market seems to have a little bit of trouble with it. You know, advertising, okay, uh, but it works for communism very well. It works for Zeitgeist really well. Uh, but the the problem is you have to eliminate the scarcity. You, you, you and really you have to make humans not be human. The two problems are eliminating scarcity and humans not being human. It's like as long as people are people, at because the, it, it, there's a certain thirst in a large percentage of the human population to get ahead. And if you have people in a, in a model like that, if, you, if anybody's trying to get ahead, 
you know, it, it's it, it, that's a personality type. You know, it's like I'm only happy if I have one more than you. Or it, it's, <laughs> you know, it's like oh, <laughs> unless you truly fully eliminate scarcity in all ways uh, enough that you can allow for the infinite one-upsmanship. <laughs> um, yeah, it it don't it uh, humans being human fuck it up. There's plenty for everybody, but then somebody one up somebody and somebody has to one up somebody else and yeah. And <laughs> yeah. How do we get off on this? 